All right, everybody, welcome back. We are about to get to the quilt show, but we got a few more rounds of fabric scrounging and square making before we get there. So I uh, just finished the main run through. It was Jen's turn, I believe. And so looking at what she's got in her hand. Now, it's interesting. Remember, she was collecting these red purples because she knew she'd have used them eventually. And wouldn't you know, a red and a purple, both of them, five pointers have just popped up. With these three cards, it's her choice. She could take either one. But remember, again, you don't want to spend a whole turn just getting one square. If you can, you want to pick up multiples just because it's more efficient. So if she used one of these, let's see, there's also a yellow. She could get that yellow because she only needs one card for it. But she can't get the red or the other green. And the thing is, she'd love to get either of these. If she gets this, it, it's, it begins to match you know, this particular pattern. Because remember, she needs to have at least three of a matching pattern or three of a matching color to be, even be able to enter the quilt show. Now, so what she'd really like to do is get this because then, hey, look at that. She's gotten three of this particular pattern and she's ready to make a quilt. But that's all green and she's got to save up some greens. But there is a green out there and there's some wild cards too. I think even though she could make a run for it right now, she's going to be greedy and hope that since I just did a big sweep, she can see I've got a bunch of cards in my hand. She can see I've still got five, but she's hoping it won't be enough and she'll be able to get what's um, coming to her. So she's going to go ahead and grab the green, thereby signaling that clearly she wants to try and get that thing. And hey, a blue green, she'll take that and, and then a red. So, no reason to take these reds either, and she can't take the wild card because this is the third card stick. She could draw a blind, she could take the red orange or the yellow. I think she'll grab another red orange because that gets her closer. Right. And so you can see she's got a very interesting big old hand now. So she's got five red cards. So she could almost do it. If she, if she used all three of these for purple, she's got two. She just needs one more red card, and she could get both of the big scores and She's got three greens. Oh, wow. She could get all of those. So she is cautiously optimistic, hopeful. Oh, wait. Oh, and another card came out. Uh, purple red. And so now it's my turn. And looking over here, I know Jen's got a big bunch of cards in her hand. And I'm thinking, you know, I need this pretty bad because, hey, it'll match um, my set. So, and I could get this right now because I need three reds for it. And here's a red and a red and a red. I won't even have to use my wild cards. But then I'd spend a whole turn just to get only one thing. <clears throat> but with that, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to be a bit wasteful and grab it while the grabbing is good. So I'm going to play these three cards, each of which you know I chopped up to get the red out so that I could make this red square. And there we go. I've now, I, I will be able to enter at least one quilt into the upcoming show. And Jen's so bummed because that's what she was making a push for. But hey, look at that. Another red showed up, although it's only, it only has a value of three instead of a value of five, but that probably just makes it easier for Jen to pick up. All right, so it's her turn. So now she could definitely get this purple and she could get the red and she could get the green and she could get the yellow. She can get all of them. So Jen's going to play it all. Um, let's see. So here's two reds to get the, to get the red and here's one, two, three purples to get the purple. And here's one, two, three greens to get the green. So now she's got a potentially winning quilt. And then while she's at it, although actually, you know what? I don't know. I'm almost inclined because she has no other yellows at all. And she has nothing else of that pattern. So picking this thing up won't help her in any way. And she'd be giving up an orange card that might help her more. So I think she won't. Even though she could get that last one, she's not going to do it. She'll leave that one there. And so she only picked up three. Plus, that means she's got two cards in her hand still. And so at the end of her turn, we reveal one, two, three. Oops, and I forgot again. I took one tile, and Jen just took three tiles. One, two, three. So we're almost to the quilt show now. Okay. And so an orange and an orange and a red came out. And Jen's happy she saved that orange because it'll be worth more to try and grab those things. Although, only three more squares can be made. Let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Everything's fine. So it's, it's actually interesting. Even if you have the perfect hand that would let you get all four squares, you can only pick up three of them because as soon as you pick up this last one, the, you know, the quilt show starts. 
So that's an interesting element as well. And now both Jen and I only have two cards in our hand. Unbeknownst to us, we both have the ability to make one quilt. But you know, if you, you can enter multiple quilts, um, multiple smaller quilts, or you can make fewer higher point big quilts. So it's not over yet. Jen would love to get this thing so she can make a two by two of this star pattern instead of just a one by three, because that'd be worth more points as an example. Or she'd love to get this orange so she could have two one by threes and enter both of them in the contest. Or she'd like to get this one so she could have two to enter in the contest. So, and she's got one orange and two of these need oranges. But anyway, that's what she's still thinking about. And it's my turn. And with my two cards, I'm not going to do anything. Although it's interesting, I have a use of this single yellow because I've already got one yellow. If I can get three that are yellow, I, can, I could go for a matching color instead of a matching pattern. It's interesting, um, the, the, the notion of going, where is it, hold it, come here you. The notion of going for a quilt that is all the same color or all the same pattern is based on real life. All the same pattern are called scrap quilts. All the same color are called sampler quilts. Just as an aside, I, there's a little bit of something I learned about quilts playing this game. All right, so my turn. I think I'm going to have to draw some cards because with my two, it's not going to do it. Let's see. So I could go and grab this yellow because that yellow is good for me. Plus, also, even if I don't use this as a yellow, it could be my third one in this pattern, so I could go for all one pattern as well. So I will grab this, the lone yellow, and then a new thing gets, oh, and then it's a, a red purple. Now, there's a red out here. There's no purples, there's, and there's two red purples here, but I, I'll go ahead and take one of the red purples, and, and a lonely orange. I'll go on, there, there's some big oranges out there. I'll see if I can grab it. Okay. And a wild card. Why didn't I draw blind? I could have gotten a wild card. Okay. Jen's turn. Let's see here. She really wants, either one of those oranges would get her a second quilt. So she really wants to push hard for orange. There's no oranges out except for wild cards. Oh wait though, shoot, I totally forgot. I just put a third wild card into the display. Very Ticket to Ride style. If you ever have too many wild cards in the display, the whole thing wipes if you get three wild cards or more and six new ones come out. So, that could really go to bed. Jen's benefit. There's an orange, there's a yellow orange, and there's another orange. Okay, Jen's very happy with that. She's going to take the uh, yellow orange, one, and a, a uh, orange red, two, and let's see. So she could get. She now could get one of the oranges, and if she's there, she might as if she if she picks up one more orange, she could also pick up the yellow as well. So what the heck? She'll go on ahead and pick up a. Uh, yeah, a single orange. All right, there we go. Boom. All right, and now it's my turn. So I know Jen just pulled a whole bunch of oranges, but there's not. Well, I, and I, if I want to give up my two wild cards, I could grab an orange before her. I could grab an orange and a yellow. That would be two things. And then on Jen's turn, she'd probably grab the last one. And and you know, but if if I don't do it quick. Jen might sweep the board, get, um, you know, get, pick up three things. This one's really cheap. This one's cheap. She might be able to get them all very quickly. And then I wouldn't get a chance to get anything. And I'd be, I would go to the quilt show at a disadvantage. So I'm going to go now. I'm going to play this single yellow to get this two pointer. Because remember, that gives me a nice match. And so that was one. And I am going to play, even though it's very costly, I'm going to play my two wild cards and this lone orange I've got. And I am going to grab this orange here. All right, and that leaves me one card in my hand. And I didn't finish it out. So that means Jen now gets a chance to buy one more. She would have liked to have gotten more, but I beat her to it. And there's a purple and a red. All right. And as soon as Jen buys one square, or I do, we go to the show. So now Jen's got all the oranges. She's got three oranges. There's no yellow for her to get anymore. There's a low car point purple, which would be awesome if she could get it, but she has no purple at all. Now, she, all she knows is I've got one card. And I, you know, she would like to spend a little bit more time drawing some more cards so she could get you know, an ideal thing. But actually, no, she can get an orange now. And it is the right pattern. But man, oh! Interestingly, instead of that, she could get this um, two-point... 
and then have, oh wait, no, no, this is, oh, this is the type she has never gotten for. Okay, yeah, she's gonna go ahead and do it. She is gonna play three oranges, you know, two off of these yellows. Um, yeah, she'll keep the orange red because she can see there's a red out there. So she's playing these, uh, that's three oranges to get the five point orange tile and that's it. Even though she would be able to use this red card to buy this, she can't because time is up and now it is time for the quilt show. Okay, and she, by the way, takes this. So we have as a reminder, after the quilt show is over, we will remember that it's my turn next because this is a reminder of who prompted the quilt show. So now what we do is in secret, we plan our quilts and then we are both gonna reveal at the same time what quilts we're actually making. Let's see, and actually the rules have a very nice summary. You, I already mentioned, you can make a one by three, you can make a two by two, you can make a two by three, a three by three, a three by four. Those are the sizes that are allowed. Um, you know, it's a, a table runner, a wall quilt, a lap quilt, a queen quilt, or a king sized quilt. And they all have to have matching patterns or matching colors. But before we actually decide how we're going to arrange the tiles we've gotten and you know enter our quilts and hopefully win, we have to find out what we're playing for. Now in a two-player game, we have to draw three medals randomly. So I'll just go on ahead and put them face down and shuffle them up. Uh, ah, that's good enough. One, two, three. All right. So for first place, or actually, maybe not first place. There's a 6,000, there's an 11,000, and there's a 9,000. Okay. So that means this is kind of a medium show because, well, I think 5,000 is the lowest it can go. Is that right? No, 6,000 is the lowest it can go. So this is the lowest. Nine is kind of in the middle, but the best ribbon is actually a 13, a 12 or a 13. So the highest score of this particular competition is not the highest it could be. And so that's another thing we have to consider. Considering the fact that there might be a show later where the top prize is 13,000 instead of 11,000, do you want to um, make your best quilt right now, or do you save it for the second or the third show? Because you could save up for a lot of shows later on. And as you can see, even though this is a two-player game, there are three prizes. So if both of us enter two quilts, well, um, three of these ribbons will go, and the fourth quilt, whichever is the poorest one, won't get any prize money at all. So that's a bit of a danger too. And then don't forget, there's the, the value of our quilts come from the, the numbers of these squares, plus we can also assign extra fancy embroidery as well. So there's a lot to think about, and we all have to make these plans in secret. Now I'm thinking, let's see. So, and also you gotta match, are you gonna match colors or patterns? Let's see, I've got two oranges. I've got, actually I don't care, I've got two of every color. I don't have three of any color at all. So I've got two greens, two yellows, one blue, one purple, two orange, yeah, so I can't make, so all mine are gonna be pattern based. I'm thinking though, I'm gonna go all in and try to win this sucker and go for this lovely two by two quilt. What is this, this is a wall quilt. And its default value is five plus three plus three plus five. So its default value is 16. Um, you know, for the purposes of, of scoring. It's all the same pattern, not the same color, so it's default 16, and if I want, I can pump that up to 17, 18, or 19, if I feel like it's necessary. So I'm gonna enter this, and now if I want, I could enter a second quilt, because I've got these three things, and you know, say so I put it like this, and this is a table, was that, what was it, a table runner? And this one's default value is five plus two plus three. This has a value of 10, which again, I could pump up, but I only ever get to use these once, or I could just let them go as they are. Let's see. Now this one, I got to assume, this one, if I pump it up, let's see, what was it? Um, uh, 10, 16. If I pump it up to an 18, I've got a pretty good shot at winning the top prize. Maybe I'll just pump it up to a 17. Yeah, I'm pretty good about that. And now this one, I'm hoping I don't, want to, I don't want to waste either of my things on it. I'm almost tempted not to even enter it, but you know it is 10 and maybe I'd get lucky and I'd pull third place and get 6,000 bucks. All right, so that's it. And that means I'm gonna leave both of these that I will be using in future quilt shows and I'm gonna leave those as well. So now I've, all, I've done all this in secret behind my shield while my opponent is doing theirs. But anyway, so I'll reveal in a second. Now let's look and see what Jen is gonna do. Now. 
She cannot make a two by two. Let's see. So she's got three greens. So she could make a, a three by three based on color, or I'm sorry, a one by three based on color, or she could make two one by threes based on pattern. You can see she's got these three patterns. And she did that. If she entered two, this one is worth five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one over here is five, 10, 15. This one little guy all by himself is worth 15. That's pretty amazing. Um, you know, this could be a contender for the top prize if Jen's willing to, you know, spend a little bit on it and maybe put the three or the two, even though it's a tinier one. Now, on the flip side, she could go another way. She could make an all green thing instead, but that's going to have a value of 13 by default. So I think she's better off definitely going for the all patterns instead of the all colors. Plus, if she went for this all color thing, then she wouldn't be able to enter a second quilt at all. But then the other question is, does she want to enter a second quilt? Maybe she just wants to keep building up because she could stop right now, just enter this one really killer quilt and say pump it up with, um, with her two. So it's a 17er and she could enter this um, just with the hopes of winning the top and then forget about the mediums because then look what that leaves her. That leaves her a lot of options so she could have a much stronger second or third quilt show if she saves these off to the side. I mean, she's got two patterns she's going, she's got, she's already got one. She gets a few more of these. She could go in the next round for a three by three or maybe even a three by four and have a really killer one on a, in a quilt show when say the $13,000 prize comes out. Now, there's one other thing that's interesting too. It's really weird. The, the rules list, basically I've described how these things are scored in the standard game. But there is, there are, there's a variant. Actually, the game comes with several different variants um, to make it you know, uh, less stressful, more stressful, shorter games. But the most interesting one is called the large quilt variant, where in addition to evaluating the quilts based on the numbers that are on them, remember this was 5 plus 5, plus three, this, so this was 17. In addition to evaluating based on the numbers, you also add the size. So this would be 17, 18, 19, tw um, 18, 19 20, 21. So it actively encourages you to build bigger and bigger quilts as, as opposed to just going for fast and dirty tiny quilts. And me personally, I like that a lot more. I think that's a much smarter way to go. It makes the game a little bit more interesting. So what that means is this was, I forgot, this was um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. This is actually a 21-er. I'm very confident. Let's see, and then this one is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. So we'll go with that. I'm going with the large quilt variant where you are actively encouraged to make the biggest quilts you can because they can score a lot more points or not score more points, but yeah, yeah, they can rate higher so that you can um, win bigger ribbons. So uh, I have secretly chosen to use almost all of my squares. Jen is saving a lot of her squares, so she's just going for a smaller one, but it's a big one still and she's hoping it'll be enough to bring home the big ribbon. And so now we reveal at the same time, keeping all of our other stuff hidden in secret and now we hand out the ribbons. And as it turns out, as good as Jen's was, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 points for this little runner. Unfortunately, this one was 21, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. So Jen thought she had it in the back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Um, yeah, this is 20. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. She thought she had it, but she lost by one point. And so I take the 11. Jen takes the nine, and then my little also ran, did exactly what I'd hoped, it took the six. And so, that means we scored, I scored um, 17,000 points. So I'll just take some um, paper money over here. Because this, instead of having, um, you know, you don't actually handle this money for the purposes of buying or selling anything. This just represents points that I, this round, scored basically 17 points or $17,000 by winning first and third place in this show. And Jen, she got, what was it, 9,000 points. So here's a five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's it. Now, the uh, quilts that got made, there were all these are removed from the game. All go away. Now, if I had, I'm sorry, if Jen had entered a second quilt, because remember she could have entered this wall runner as well.
That meant there would have only been, three, and you know, heck, say maybe she um, you know, pumped it up. So this was a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is a 13 pointer. Now, say it, that wasn't enough and it didn't win third place, it came in fourth. What that means is this sticks around. This becomes an automatic entry in the second and potentially the third and final quilt show as well. And so, it, because this one is sticking around, I can see, and I can see how much it is, I've automatically got competition in the second quilt show. But Jen kept it aside because she's hoping to make an even bigger, better quilt. Okay. And, um, right. And otherwise, so that was all that. All the, the timers come back out to the center of the table because we're going to start, you know, getting more scrap fabric, making more squares. And since Jen had this, we can now remember that it was my turn next. I've only got one card and I need to get some cards because I can see, oops, here's another quilt that's come out. And so we start building up, we start saving for the second quilt show, but we know I was basically the winner of the first quilt show, but Jen is definitely setting herself up for a much, much better second show. She's got more cards than me. She's got more tiles than me. I've just got more points than her. And that's it, folks. You do that twice more, and, um, and then you uh, reveal final who made the most money. Who knew there was that many thousands and thousands of dollars to be made in prize money in quilt shows? Go figure. It's a fairly lucrative um, pastime, it would seem. But that's it. That's Quilt Show. And if you have any... Um, well, actually, no, what am I talking about? I'm not doing it. If you'd like, you can now hit the button or follow the show notes on screen and go to Final Thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.